the Mini 2 has several new functionalities compared to original Mini. Some of them very important and is marketed at a very affordable price. It is likely to become the best-selling beginner drone, but because of this diminutive size and the weight below 250 grams, it can follow more relaxed regulation, especially in urban environment. So I expect that quite a few professional video users will put one in their bag in certain situations. Now that this drone can shoot 4K video, as the excellent OcuSync transmission system and supports RAW photos. In this video I will drive you through DJI Fly Up and all the settings needed to make the most of these drone capabilities in a very quick and simple way. I will only analyze the really useful ones, there is no point in wasting time on settings that are never used. I will also insist on the new features compared to the original Mini. This video is aimed both to absolute beginners and experienced users who are not yet familiar with the Mavic Mini 2. So, let's get going. The app functioning as interface for your mobile device is DJI Fly, the same as in the original Mini and in the Mavic Air 2 while the Mavic 2 series has a different one, DJI Go 4. I do like the simple and intuitive layout of the new app, but let's have a quick tour. On the top left we have a display of the flying mode we are in, seen as smooth, normal or sport. But unlike the original Mavic Mini, we cannot tap on it to change mode, as in the Mini 2 we use the mode selector in the middle of the remote controller. Slightly to the right there is an indicator showing if takeoff is permitted or if a calibration is needed or a warning message about the area we are in. On the top right we have the percentage of the battery of the drone left, the remaining flight time, the level or remote control battery and the number of satellites available. Further to the right the three dots icon to access the setting, which we will analyze later on. On the right hand side we have the icon leading us to the video photo menu. I will not go into detail here about the video and photo functionalities here, as I will soon publish specific videos about them. But let's just see what is new compared to the original Mini. In photo we have now a automatic exposure bracketing mode, which is a good addition, although it's limited to only 3 shots. In video we have of course 4K resolution, which is one of the main new features, for many people a real game changer. Not that 4K and 2.7K have a maximum frame rate of 30 frames per second, while at full HD 1080p 60 frames per second is available for slow motion. The list of quick shots has been increased by adding boomerang. And there is now also a panorama photo mode, another welcome addition. In video mode we now have the possibility to zoom in digitally, as you can see from the icon next to the shutter. At 4K the zoom factor is 200%. At 2.7K 300% and at 1080p 400%. We can operate the zoom by dragging a finger up or down from the zoom icon. For smoother results we can hold down the FN button on the remote controller and rotate the wheel for the gimbal tilt. At the bottom from the left we have an indicator of the elevation of the drone and the vertical speed then an indicator of the distance of the drone from the home point and the horizontal speed. In the middle an icon shows the position of the drone relative to the home point. Further to the right we have an icon showing how much space we have left in the memory card for photos or video, according to the mode we are in. Note that the Mini 2, like the original Mini, doesn't have any internal storage. To the bottom right we have some icons for adjusting the exposure. When in manual mode we can adjust separately ISO and shutter speed, while in auto mode we can increase or decrease the luminosity by using EV values. 
It is possible to lock the exposure to avoid a big shift in luminosity while shooting video. Finally, on the left part, we have the auto takeoff button. Let me walk you through the most useful settings by tapping on the icon with three dots on the top right. Let's start with the first tab, security. We can set the maximum altitude and maximum distance the drone can fly, according to your local regulation. I am using the metric system, but if you prefer the Imperial, I will show you how to set it later on in this video. The auto return to home altitude is very important, as the Mini 2 doesn't have sensor for obstacle avoidance, and this is probably the biggest limitation of this drone. A lot of care is needed by planning your flight in advance and keeping a safe distance from all obstacles. Keep in mind that when returning home, the drone will rise to the altitude specified here, and then fly straight to the position from where it took off. If the drone should encounter an obstacle, it will crash into it, so it is very important to set an altitude that will clear all surrounding obstacles. The option Update on Point is to be used when you have moved from the takeoff point during the flight, maybe walking or from a vehicle or a boat. Scrolling down to Option to calibrate the compass and the IMU. Whenever you notice an unusual behavior in the drone, it is always a good idea to do all the different calibrations, especially the IMU. After hitting the calibration button, the process is very clearly explained on screen. The option Fly My Drone can be very useful if the drone has fallen down and the battery is still going. The position of the drone will be shown on a map, and it is also possible to have the drone flashing and beeping. At the very bottom we find the Advanced Safety Settings, where we can choose the behavior of the drone in case of signal loss. One possibility is return to home, useful in most cases, but it has to be avoided when flying indoors or under trees, as remember that the drone will rise to the altitude we have chosen. Another possibility is to set it to over in place. The option descend is in my opinion to be avoided, as the drone will immediately land and it can end up in bushes, rocks or in someone's property. In the tab Control you can set the unit used throughout the app, in Metric or Imperial. Then we have two tabs for the appearance of the front LED. Scrolling down we have several tabs concerning the, the gimbal behavior. When filming the default mode is follow, where the camera will be maintained always in horizontal position. In FPV mode, the camera will follow the leaning movement of the aircraft when turning, giving the impression of being in the cockpit of a small airplane. The tab Allow Upward Gimbal Rotation can be turned on to gain extra 20 degree of upward movement past 90 degree. This is very useful, also considering that the propellers have never shown up in my footage so far. In Advanced Gimbal setting, we can set the speed and smoothness on the gimbal vertical tilt and horizontal rotation for each of the three flight modes, Cinesmooth, Normal and Sport, like in the Mavic 2. Scrolling down, we find a tab for the calibration of the gimbal. We then find a few tabs for the remote controller, but we don't need to take any action. Simply note that the FN button can be customized, but at the moment the only option available is Recenter Gimbal. Basically the gimbal will toggle between top down and straight ahead, which is very useful. We also have a tab for the calibration of the remote control and the flight tutorial for beginners. The camera menu is packed with options and is the one we use the most. The first set of options is context sensitive. The options will be different according to the mode we are in, video, photo or panorama. Let's start with video. 
The Mini doesn't have a choice of color profiles, so the video settings are extremely simple. We can choose the anti-flicker mode. It can be set to off, auto or a choice between 50 or 60 Hz. It helps reduce artifacts when filming with electric light, and the choice of different frequencies is due to the different Hz values used in the United States and in Europe. The slider video subtitle will be kept off by most users, but it can be very useful for some professional ones. When this option is on, metadata relative to the footage will be stored and can be viewed using VLC player. In photo mode we have a completely different menu. We can choose the format either JPEG or JPEG plus RAW. I'm not going into details here about the difference between the two formats, as I suppose everyone doing photography knows it well. But it's hard to understand why it is not possible to choose RAW only, which would be very useful. I'm pretty much sure this will be fixed soon. Then we have a choice for size between 4.3 or 16.9. I recommend to use 4.3 as the photo will be taken by the entire sensor and we can crop afterwards if needed. The 16.9 format gives the correct resolution for video, but it is better to have the choice of cropping as we like from the bigger format. Further down we get to the section labeled General, where the options apply to all different modes. We have two tools to help us posing. The histogram is very widely used and can be dragged around the screen in any position. Very useful. Overexposer warning shows zebra stripes in the overexposed areas. It can be useful but also a bit distracting. I personally prefer to use only the histogram. The option Auto Sync HD Photos allows the drone to transfer your HD photos automatically to your mobile device. Then there is a choice of three different screen overlays to help framing. I use the grid in the middle that helps applying the rule of thirds. The white balance can be set manually and I strongly suggest avoiding automatic white balance for video as it can cause shifting colors when the amount of light changes. When manually selected, there is a slider to set the desired Kelvin value. In storage, we can check the space available in the SD card, and we can format it if needed. If cache when recording is selected, a low resolution version of the video being shot will be recorded in the mobile device. It can be occasionally useful when you must immediately check your footage, but in most cases I suggest to turn this option off, as it might slow down or overload your mobile device. In the last two tabs to the right, Transmission and About, there is no action to be taken. In transmission, frequency can remain in dual band and channel mode in auto. You should only try different values if you are experiencing transmission issues, but the OcuSync system is in my opinion solid as a rock. The menu about gives info about the firmware and the battery, but does not require any action. I will be doing plenty of in-depth videos about the different aspects of the Mini 2. You should find a link on the playlist on screen now. If you're interested in drones, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Bye for now and fly safe.